हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल क्लिनिकल बायो केमिस्ट्री विद डॉक्टर पी के प्रभाकर टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट दिस इज माय सेकंड लेक्चर इन द सीरीज ऑफ जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द रेस्ट्रिक्शन इन डोन्यूक्लियज इंजाम दिस इज वन ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट इंजाम विच वी आर गोइंग टू यूज फॉर जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग और मोलिकुलर क्लोनिंग यू कैन कॉल इट सो इन दी फर्स्ट लेक्चर आई हैव जस्ट टॉक अबाउट द ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट द जीन क्लोनिंग वट इज द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ जीन क्लोनिंग so this is the second lecture in the series uh if you have not subscribe my channel you can subscribe it uh if you like the video press the like button so that you will get and press the bell button so that you will get all the notification on time so let's start so if you see the gene cloning steps roughly we i have told you there are seven important steps in the gene cloning which starts from the selection of uh, gene of interest selection of vector Uh, then we are having restriction enzymes digestion loading of gene of interest onto the vector and uh, then ligation transfection selection of the transformed cells culture and purification this is the total seven steps we are having uh, so this is uh, isolation of uh, gene of interest then selection of vector the loading of gene of interest onto the vector after so you are going here you are going to use restriction endonuclease will be used to cut the gene of interest from this long dna plus same restriction enzymes we are going to use to cut the vector also so that both will have similar type of end then both will be joined together and ultimately we will have a recombinant dna this recombinant dna will be transferred into the bacterial cells that transforms will be selected and then it will be cultured and ultimately genes or dna or protein will be purified so this is the basic story behind the gene cloning so just i am going to focus at this place so when we have want to separate isolate my gene of interest and the vector to be cut means um, chop down cut digested there we require a specific cesar that is called as uh restriction in nuclease so these are the different tools which we have seen in the previous lecture also so we require gene of interest we require a vector restriction in your nucleage ligase host reverse transcriptase alkaline phosphatase t4 nucleotide kinase s1 nuclease clinio fragment lambda exonuclease exonuclease 3 bal 31 exonuclease tdt linker and adapter so all these are different tools and techniques for molecular biology i am going to focus today on this restriction endonuclease this restriction endonuclease is a enzyme uh which normally you can call it nuclease nuclease means anything which is going to digest the nucleic acid nucleic acid means either dna or rna which is going to be digested is called as nuclease now da those enzymes which is going those nuclease which digest dna is called as dna and those which digest rna is called as rna in this dna uh we will restriction in nuclease normally falls in dna okay so so nuclease we have understand uh, what is nuclease those which is going to digest the nucleic acid either dna or rna so in that case dna will be of two types either exonuclease or endonuclease if enzyme works from the terminus either terminus either 3 prime terminus or 5 prime terminus of the dna so that one nucleotide will be removed each steps so single single nucleotide will be removed that is called as exonuclease means enzyme attacks the dna from the either terminal second one is endonuclease where excision occurs between the terminus end not from the terminus it will be in the center in the between so that dna will be fragmented in this case single nucleotide will be removed here fragment will be formed so this is endonuclease we are going to talk about restriction endonuclease this so restriction endonuclease is of made up of two different terms restriction and endonuclease restriction means cut and digest endonuclease means inside so those enzymes those nuclease enzymes which cut or digest the dna inside is called as restriction endonuclease this restriction in nucleus it is a kind working as a molecular seizure 
uh, like uh, seizure we are going to use to cut the uh, different kind of cloth papers and other things similarly molecular uh, this is used to cut the dna this is one of the important tools for the manipulating dna or modifying dna it found naturally in a wide variety of prokaryotes normally if you we'll see the prokaryotic system they don't have immune system they are having a defense system so restriction endonuclease is one kind of defense system which prokaryotes is having so that it they can protect themselves whenever a bacteriophage attacks a bacteria bacteriophage nucleic acid enters into the bacterial cells so that time this bacteria recognize that for this is a foreign dna and it will be digested with the help of restriction endonuclease now how bacteria recognize that this is the foreign dna this is my not bacterial dna so there is a methylation on adenine and cytosine with the help of methylated adenine and methylated cytosine bacteria recognizes whenever methylated adenine and cytosines will be there it will be bacterial dna so that type of uh, enzymes will be protected it will not be digested and those which is unmethylated that will be digested by restriction endonuclease this restriction endonuclease cut double stranded dna molecules at a specific point we are going to come why i this specific point, point is little bit bold i will talk later on this restriction endonuclease have a capacity to recognize a specific base sequence now we have a dna like uh, this is a tube in this case we are having a dna i have put restriction endonuclease it does not mean restriction endonuclease cut dna from any places from any random places it's not like that one restriction endonuclease recognize a specific base sequence of 4 to 8 base pair that is called as recognition site of restriction enzyme once it is going to recognize then it is going to digest that is called rest restriction site so recognition site and restriction site recognition site is for the identification for the binding restriction site is for the digestion are you cut the double dna double helix or at near a specific recognition site within the molecule known as restriction site so recognition site for the recognition restriction site for the digestion like in this case you can say this is one of the restriction endonuclease whose name is eco r1 i will tell you later on how to do the nomenclature so this is eco r1 they recognize a six nucleotide sequence that is called as gaa ttc so this is the recognition sequences once the eco r1 recognizes the restriction site for this eco r1 is in between g and a so it is going to digest here so ultimately this type of digestion will takes place so this is one fragment and this one is another fragment this is fragment number 1 this is fragment number 2 so th by this so this is recognition and restriction both are different thing sometime both restriction and recognition is within the same site same place sometime it will be outside this recognition site so the uh, recognition sites uh, restriction enzymes recognizes a specific sequence of 4 to 8 nucleotide long and produces a double strand cut if the recognition site is a four nitrogenous base long four nucleotide long then its possibility its probability will be it will be repeated after 250 base pair every times because 4 to the power 4 four means four nucleotide atgc and how many length that is n n means length so here 4 to the power 4 if i will talk about the six base pair long so it will be 4 to the power 6 that time repetition of that particular sequence will be after every 4096 base pair if it is of eight base pair long then it will be repeated after this many base pair most of these recognition sites are palindromic in nature what is palindromic like if you we'll see m a d a m if you are going to read from this side it will be madam if you are going to read from this side it is madam so any sequence which is going to be read from a either side it will be the same side that is called as, called as palindromic sequences so most of those recognition sites of restriction enzymes are palindromic in nature now this here you can see example this g a a t t c either you are going to read from this side it is g a a t t c or you are going to read from this side it is gaa ttc so this is palindromic sequence similarly here also 
TTA, GCAC, TTA, GCAC, it will be GTG, CTAA, GTG, CTAA. So, this is palindromic sequences. Okay. There are two types of palindromic sequence we are having. In theory, there are two types of palindromic sequence that are can be possible. One is called as mirror, mirror like palindromic sequences. Like mirror like if, if I this is the palindromic sequence where if I put the mirror, this is looking like T T A G C A C T T A G C A C. So this is looking like a mirror is in between and sequence is almost repeated. So that is called as like here G A T G T A G T A. This is called as mirror like palindromic sequences. Second one is inverted repeats. Like here you can see. This is not mirror like this is inverted repeats. Okay, like G T A T A C here if you like G complement if you like it G T A like that one. So that is called as inverted repeats. In the molecular biology, inverted repeat palindromic sequences are of more common. This type of sequences, this type of sequences are more common, most preferred, and it will have high biological importance than the mirror-like sequences. So most of the recognition sites are inverted repeat palindromic sequences. When a restriction enzyme cuts the DNA, it is going to give you two types of end. Either it will be a staggered or a sticky end or it will give you a bulk blunt end. Like this is a sequence which is for the eco R16 sequence GATTC. You know that uh, G, uh, this is this uh, recognition site and it is going to restrict at this place. So after this uh, restriction it is going to digest from uh, between GA GA so as a result it is going to give you this type of product where one strand of DNA is slightly smaller and another strand is slightly longer so one end is little bit protruded end this is 3 prime so this will be 5 prime end so here 5 prime protruded is there here 3 this is 5 prime so 5 prime protruded end is there this is called as a sticky end or a staggered end why it is called a sticky end because normally DNA or nucleic acid is having a very good property that it is going to hybridize very easily with the help of hydrogen bond. So if these two strands will be come closer, automatically hydrogen bond will be formed between this one, this one, like this one. So they will easily hybridize. So that's why like magnet. So this that's why it is called as sticky end. Some other type of uh, end is blunt end. Like this is the uh, SMA one is the another enzymes, restriction enzymes, which recognizes CCC, GGG. In this case, the restriction in, uh, site is this one. Recognition site is this six nucleotide site uh, sequence and the uh, restriction site is in the center. So as a result, we are going to get this type of product. Here, none of the end is protruded. Both ends are of same length. So this is called like blunt end. Normally, this type of end is of not too useful uh, most of the cases we prefer this type of sequence this type of end so that easily it will hybridize so here also you can see like uh, echo and r1 so this is a sticky end and this is blunt end uh, otherwise total three different types of ends we are going to get it first we are going to get a five prime protruded end in this case five prime protrusion is there in this case, 3 prime end is protruded. In this case, blunt end. So, 2 uh, staggered or sticky end. 1 is 5 prime protrusion. Th th second one is 3 prime protruded end. And third one is blunt ended DNA. Why, when we are going to uh, select the gene, so gene will be gene of interest that will be digested by the section enzymes. And vector and where we are going to load the, this gene so both vector and gene of interest need to be digested with the same restriction enzymes why because it will be easily going to be hybridized like this is my gene of interest if i am going to digest this one with eco r1 so it will give me uh, it will be digested at here and if plasmid will be digested there also we will have the same stick end so both stkn will with join with very easily with each other so that's why we require it with digestion should be its digestion should be of both digestion will be of same restriction enzymes now what is the role of this bi uh, biological role of this uh, restriction enzymes most of the bacteria use 
restriction enzymes as their defense system against bacteriophages. Now I have told you it is one of the defense mechanism where foreign DNA can be digested with the help of this restriction enzymes. So restriction enzymes prevent the replication of the phage by cleaving it DNA at a specific site. The host DNA is protected by the methylase enzymes. So methylation will be there. Where methylation will be there? On adenine and cytosine. Now if you see here, in this case, this is the DNA where methylation is not there. So it is unmethylated DNA. So unmethylated DNA will be digested with the help of restriction enzymes. So ultimately DNA will be digested. If the same adenine will be methylated, like here you can see it, in that case eco R1 will not cleave this methylated DNA because methylated DNA is treated as bacterial own DNA and that will be protected. Now this restriction endonuclease history if you say uh, this was first studied by Arbor and Meselson where they have seen the type 1 restriction enzymes which normally cleaves randomly from the recognition site. So they recognize at one point and restrict digest at different pl pl place. Then in 1970 Hamilton O. Smith, Thomas Kelly and Kent Wilcox isolated type 2 restriction enzymes that is HIND2. This was the first enzyme which was isolated uh, from the Haemophilus influenza. And this is the enzymes which preferably we are going to use in molecular cloning or gene cloning. From till today, more than 3000 restriction enzymes have been studied in details and more than 600 of these are available commercially in the market. Now come to the nomenclature, how these restriction uh, enzymes are going to be nomenclature. The nomenclature of restriction endonuclease follows a general pattern. In this case, the first letter of the name of genus in which the given enzyme is discovered is written in capital. Like in this case, if this enzyme is isolated from the Isercia coli, so this is the genus, so we will write E in the capital. Then this is followed by the first two letter of the species name of the organism, like from coli, CO I am going to take, so it will be in the small, we have written CO. These three letters are generally written in italics, like ECO from the Isercia coli. HIN in case of this one, HIN in case of BAM, BAS B and AM, HIN, okay, HPA from Haemophilus uh, para influenza. Then if strains are there, so strain names are there or numbers are there, so a strain or type identified is depicted as sub uh, subscript, like uh, in this case R, D, in this case H, if it is not there, it need not to be there. If the enzyme is encoded by a plasmid, the plasmid name is written as a superscript, subscript. When an organism uh, produces more than one enzyme, they are identified by sequential Roman numbers, depending on their discovery. Like this is 1, 1 means from Isercia coli, this is the first enzyme which was isolated. So E is Isercia. CO means coli, R means a strain, this one means first enzyme. H means hemophilus, influenza, D a strain, third enzyme in this sequence of isolation purification. Bacillus, amylo, H strains, first enzyme. So this is how it is going to be do the nomenclature. Okay, these are some of the examples of enzymes. BAM H1, eco R1, HIN3, NOT1, PST1, SMA1. These restriction enzymes are going to be di divided into, uh, classified into different category. So three important category we are having, type 1, type 2, type 3. Type 1 uh, enzymes normally re uh, recognize one DNA and cleavage site, uh, re recognition site is a thousand base pair away from the recognition site. Like we will see the example, in this case this is the recognition site, this is the double standard DNA and this is the recognition site. So if type 1 enzyme, they will digest, not digest in this particular place, they will digest 1000 base pair this side or 1000 base pair this side. Type 2, their specific cleavage site is within the recognition site. So they are going to cleave DNA in this recognition site only, in this area only. So it is fixed. In case of type 3, random cleavage site, 
it will be not in the recognition side it will be 24 to 26 base pair away so either this side or this side 24 to 26 base pair away <coughs> we will see in the details type 1 type 2 type 3 this is the uh, type 1 thousand base pair away from the recognition site within the recognition site 24 to 26 base pair away from the recognition site uh, all the three enzymes is having the methylage capacity they can methylate the adenine of uh, the bacterial DNA so in this case type 1 endonuclease and methylase located on the single protein molecule these are the example of type 1 in case of type 2 endonuclease and methylase are on separate entities so not together and these are the example of type 2 in case of type 3 endonuclease and methylase located on the single protein molecules and these are the example uh, Type 2 has been classified into many different ways uh, because maximum enzymes we are having variety of type 2 and they are having many classes, many subclasses you can call it. So first type 1, uh, they are complex nuclease enzyme, nuclease because it is going to digest the nucleic acids. They function simultaneously as nuclease and methylase and requires ATP, magnesium and s adenosyl methionine for the methylation. So three things is going to be required by them. They are single multifunctional enzymes and uh, with three different subunits, a restriction subunit, a modification subunit and a specificity subunit. The re in this case, uh, recognition site is roughly 15 base pair in the length and they cut the DNA at 1000 base pair away either side on the recognition site. Uh, this enzyme exhibit a ATP activity, so this ATP will be hydrolyzed by this one and these enzymes show a specificity for the recognition site but not for the cleavage site. So cleavage sites will be randomly, so you are going to get a random product. That's why this is not very desirable. desirable. They recognize at a specific site but restriction site is random places, randomly going, so random product we will get it. So this is, this will not give you a desired product whatever you want. Now come to type 2. In case of type 2, they are very simple enzymes that consist of sim, uh, simple polypeptides. They recognize a specific nucleic, uh, nucleic nucleotide sequence and cut the DNA molecule at this specific sequence nowhere else. So within the same site, so the defined product, desired product you are going to, because you know the where it is going to restrict, which is where it is going to recognize and where it is going to digest. So the specific product you will get it. They are very stable and only require magnesium ion, no ATP, no acid soil methionine is needed here. The majority of the uh, known recognition sites are palindromic sequences and it resulted into blunt end and sticky end of product, both type, depending on which type of enzyme we are going to use it. In case of type 3, they have of two different subunits. They require ATP and magnesium ion. Type 1 required ATP, magnesium, acid cell methionine. Type 2 required only magnesium. Type 3 requires ATP and magnesium. They recognize uh, the uh, recognition sites are asymmetric, non palindromic sequences. In contrast with the type 2, the single strand produced by the type 3 endonuclease always away differ from each other. They lack on ATP activity in acid cell methionine, not required. They produce a relative homogeneous population of DNA. They are not used in gene cloning because cleavage products are not uniform. So this is the comparative uh, comparison of all the three types. Single multifunctional enzymes, separate endonuclease for methylase, separate enzyme <coughs> require three important components, ATP, magnesium and SAM, only magnesium, ATP and magnesium. Uh, restrict thousand base pair away from the specific recognition site near the specific site and 24 to 26 base pair away from the recognition site these are some of the example uh, these all enzymes are not necessarily you need to remember it but few enzymes as an example you can remember it there are three specific terms we are going to use when we are talking about the restriction enzymes first one is isocytomer in this case those restriction enzymes, those restriction endonuclease which have the same recognition sequence and the same cleavage site 
are called as isocytomer. Like if you'll say SPH1 and BBU1, they recognize CGT ACG, CGT ACG. So recognition sites are same for both the enzyme, and restriction site is also same. They cut between C and G and C and G. So same recognition site, same restriction site, and as a result, we are going to get same DNA product, same kind of product you will get after the digestion. So those. In, uh, restriction enzymes which have same recognition site, same restriction site, it produces same product are called as isocytomer. Second term is neocytomer. In this case, we are going to have same recognition site, but the different restriction sites are called as neocytomer. Like in this case, asthma and eczema, they recognize CCC, GGG, but the restriction site for asthma is in the center. And asthma, eczema is going to uh, digest in the first and second between first and second nucleotide. So as a result, you are going to get here blunt ended DNA. You will get it, and here you will get the sticky end of DNA. So different type of product you are going to get it. So in this case, we have same recognition site, different restriction site, and as a result, you are going to get different products. These are called as neocytomer. And the last one is. Isocodomer. In this case, the restriction enzymes which have different recognition sequence produces the same stick end after the digestion, after the restrictions are called as isocodomer. Only the product will be the same. Different recognition sequence, different restriction sites, only the product will be the same. Like in this case, BAM H1, BG2, and SAW31 produces a this type of stickin ctag 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 but they recognize the different sequences so in this case different recognition site different restriction site only the product will be the same that is called as isocodomer so this was roughly a basic informations uh, whatever i want to give it to you uh, regarding to the restriction enzymes their classification their recognitions uh, so this is all about about the restriction enzymes, restriction endonuclease, their class, their uh, how it works, isocytomer, isoneocytomer, and isocodomer. So hope you have understand it. If you have any query, any comments, you, you can write in the comment box. Your comments always in boost us, encourage us, so, and it helps us into the improvement. Thank you very much for your kind support. If you have not subscribed my channel, you can subscribe it. Uh, thank you very much. Have a nice day.